Well, look, for me, it was it was always it was hard too going to Europe because um, even then, when you when you were there, nothing was certain. Like you weren't certain if a new manager would come in. I, I mean, I've had my time in Belgium where I've had a couple of different managers, and it can be very difficult because one manager likes you, he goes out, then another manager comes in, he doesn't like you, and then you know. So it it, it builds resilience, it, it builds um, character, um, and it, and it's you know it's definitely it's not easy like i mean if it was easy everyone would be doing it so i mean look it, it was um it was hard but I, I feel like if you if you put a good group of people around you um then that certainly makes it a lot easier i have to say quickly on a side note is that i had an opportunity to, to actually go and play in india in, in the in the Super League, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Buddy Farrow, who's a, is a manager, football manager here in Australia, well known, um, said there was an opportunity, and I wish I had a maybe experience because everything, like you know, you want to experience everything. I mean, I went to Spain and played a game, or well, played a couple of games in La Liga Five, I think it was, uh, and I wanted to go to Spain when I was like 18, 19, and. It's funny enough, I had to wait till I was 40 years old to go and experience that. But uh, look, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that it's taken me all over the place. But it, with football, it builds resilience. But um, you learn so many different things, different cultures. Um, you experience a lot. I know that with Australians, we're pretty down to earth people, pretty cruisy. Um, I know we don't. We're, we're probably not like that when you when you think of our cricket team. But but we're we're a pretty cruisy group, and uh, I had to learn a lot when I went to Europe to be a bit tougher. The VAR show, the one place for your weekly football update. Hola, very warm welcome to the VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue the theme of interviews as usual and we have former Mel- Melbourne Victory and Australian player Mr. Archie Thompson with us. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Archie for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to the show and I would like to begin by asking you how are you and what are you doing these days? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really great. Thank you very much for having me uh, on your show. Um, I know that uh, a lot of friends of mine have actually gone and played in India. And, uh, you know, even a really close friend of mine, Timmy Kale. Um, so that was a great experience for him. And, uh, yeah, look, for us, it's, um, it, this pandemic is obviously strange times. But um, in saying that, it actually uh, kind of connects you with people that you wouldn't necessarily connect with. Um, obviously, when you message me via linkedin about possibly doing an interview maybe it was something i would never have thought of doing in this period but so for me it's about connecting and connecting with people across uh, different countries different cultures uh obviously with iso we're just starting our league back again tomorrow which is exciting it was supposed to start here in melbourne but unfortunately they've had to close the borders and um i can't really do anything with fox sports which is the broadcaster here uh, so for me now, it's just uh, waiting for probably next year to start, next season. But uh, I'll obviously still be doing a, uh, things behind the scenes when it when it comes to the A-League. So, you know, like, uh, I'll talk over a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening all around the world, you know, like uh, all the pandemic and, you know, many other disturbing things going on. So I'll talk about your career. Mm. You, you have had so much success in your career, you know, with club and country. Yeah. Did you envision that you would have this amazing journey when you started? No, not really because um, for me, I started a little bit late. Um, football wasn't my number one priority. I, I had other things that I liked. and um, I think these days, you, if you want to um, be a professional footballer, you have to be disciplined, dedicated early. Um, so my path was a little bit different, but I, I'm very grateful for the for the opportunity that I've had and success. I mean, like, I know that there's probably a lot of players here in Australia that have gone on to big leagues and um, had great European uh, uh, careers. But look, I I was grateful to have my time in Belgium for four years. Um, I've been part of the A-League here in Australia, which has been unbelievable. Um, Gone to a World Cup, lots of uh, World Cup qualifications, Asia Cups, 
with Australia, play with some of the best Australian players to ever play for Australia. Um, so, you know, for a little country boy here in Australia, um, I'm, I'm really uh, obviously grateful to, to have had the career. And, you know, I'm still involved in the game. I still do stuff with Fox Sports here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still in communication with a lot of uh, ex-players, even current players with the Socceroos and players overseas. So, look, I, I'm, I'm still involved in the game. I love it. I, I actually probably enjoy it more at the uh, youth level and kids because that's I'm a big kid in myself uh, but yeah I, I, I just I love it I'm, I'm happy that I've yeah forged a career in it so you know like as a country boy what was the most difficult thing for you you know like making it as a pro because so many people try you know not only in Australia all over the world but even they don't make it like what was the most yeah. difficult thing for you well look for me it was it was always it was hard to going to Europe because um, even then when you when you were there nothing was certain like you weren't certain if a new manager would come in i i mean i've had my time in belgium where i've had a couple of different managers and it can be very difficult because one manager likes you he goes out then another manager comes in he doesn't like you and then you know so it, it, it builds resilience it, it builds um character um and, it, and it's you know it's definitely uh, it's not easy like i mean if it was easy everyone would be doing it so i mean look it, it was um it was hard, but I feel like if you if you put a good group of people around you, um, then that certainly makes it a lot easier. I have to say quickly on a side note is that I had an opportunity to, to actually go and play in India in, in the in the Super League. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Buddy Farah, who's a, is a manager, football manager here in Australia, well known, um, said there was an opportunity, and I wish I had a maybe experience because everything like you know. You want to experience everything. I mean, I went to Spain and played a game, or well, played a couple of games in La Liga 5, I think it was. Uh, and I wanted to go to Spain when I was like 18, 19. And it's funny enough, I had to wait till I was 40 years old to go and experience that. But uh, look, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that it's taken me all over the place. But it, with football, it builds resilience. But um, you learn so many different things, different cultures. Um, you experience a lot. I know that with Australians, we've pretty down to earth people, pretty cruisy. Um, I know we don't, we're, we're probably not like that when you when you think of our cricket team, but but we're we're a pretty cruisy group. And uh, I had to learn a lot when I went to Europe to be a bit tougher. So definitely, so you know, like uh, one instrumental or, or major impact in your career has been Melbourne Victory, where you scored so yeah. much goals, you know, and won a lot of individual as well as team accolades. How do you look? And you also, I think, ambassador for them right now. Uh, I was, but no, I, I was, decided okay. to stop. So how yeah, do you look yeah. back at your time there? Uh, well, look, because when I went to Melbourne Victory, it was only a new team. So I was in Europe at the time. Um, I'd had a great year there and the, the club wanted to sign me again. But then, you know, at the time with my um, ex-wife now, uh, we were expecting our second child. So for me, being away from family was difficult and that's, some of the challenges you have to face and sacrifices as a professional athlete, which can be tough. So I w decided to go back to Melbourne Victory, new league, new competition, didn't know what to expect. And for me, it was I felt like it was a taking a step back, but it's been 10 steps forward. Like, I mean, when I think of people that have had successful careers, Australian players over in Europe, come back here and nobody really um, knows too much about their success unless you're in the football world. Uh, for me, with the A-League starting and being new, uh, everyone that wasn't even a football fan wanted to know what this was about. And I, I became a kind of household name. Everyone sort of knew me. Um, and with being with Melbourne, being uh, a, a, such a big uh, sporting city, um, immediately everyone just, as soon as Melbourne victory, everyone flocked. And, you know, we had success straight away. And, you know, I was part of, part of that. And, I think that's why um, I've had the career here in Australia and especially with Melbourne and I still, even when I'm doing the Fox Sports at games, they still chant my name and uh, sometimes they, they chant it more than what the actual players are on the pitch, <laughs> which is which is a nice kind of uh, legacy to leave, I think, because I've always played the game uh, as a fan. So I, I, I kind of didn't separate myself from that, which sometimes people and players do 
um, let the egos get get hold of you. I have, I must admit, in my time, but I feel like I'm in a better place to kind of connect with ev- everybody. So you know, like uh, the Australian league, at least in Asian context, is one of the very good leagues. You know, like the football leagues. So, but yeah. you know, like as a league as a whole, they have not produced or they have not performed well in the Champions League. I think yeah. you have had only one winner in 2014. Yeah. Why is that so? Yeah. Like, do you not take it seriously, or is it like a different context? Oh, look, uh, definitely take it seriously. Um, but then. When we did win it with Western Sydney Wanderers that won the, um, like this this club that won it and the clubs here in Australia, we don't have budgets um, and, and money at our disposal like a lot of these Asian clubs do. So already uh, it's always difficult and um, and with the travel makes it certainly harder, especially because uh, the way our competition is, it's, it, it doesn't overlap. Um, the Asian competition, it, it's always jagged. So uh, when we're coming into season, um, sort of clubs are coming out and then, you know, it, it's just so difficult. Uh, but we, we certainly do want to do well, but it, it, it's always, there's um, issues with having a, a big enough squad, um, having quality, enough quality. You look at a lot of the Japanese, Chinese, uh, Korean clubs that are so successful, is they've got they got three or four different teams they can choose from. We're, we're unfortunately uh, that we, we have squads that we're only allowed 23, and then we're only a certain allowed a certain amount of foreigners. So it's it's always harder to kind of um, compete. But look, we, we, we certainly want to keep doing well, and and uh, I know that we're probably at our national level still very strong in Asia. So we want to obviously spill that over into our, our domestic competition. Which is, you know, we, we, keep li- we keep learning, we keep getting better, but it, you can't compete sometimes when, the, when someone's budget's here and we're like there. So it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard. So you know, like, like you mentioned, like uh, you played in Belgium between 2001 and 2005 and was it something that you always wanted to do, like go outside and experience or was it a spontaneous decision in your career? Yeah, well, um, growing up, uh, you know, all you want to do is play in some of the biggest leagues in Australia, uh, in the world. So, and, and to have success or even have a career or even earn money, that was the place to go. Um, so uh, that that's what all the, in, in my generation we had to look to do. But now with the A League, um, players didn't really necessarily have to go overseas uh, to make money, which I feel like has hampered our. Um, or restricted us producing good players because the players that I played with were playing in pop leagues and in uh, in the UK, in Italy, in Spain. So we had such a great um, national team, which helped our national team. Now, unfortunately, I mean, we want to, with the A-League, it's great because it, it gives people opportunity and in Korea, but sometimes it, it kind of stops people from wanting to progress and, and get better. Um, but look, I, I, I feel like the A-League's still great. I mean, we're, we're in a bit of a tough moment as it is. We, we have to cut our um, broadcasting deal. Um, so there's not going to be enough. There's not going to be much money that's been, uh, you know, able to give to the players and clubs and attract people to come here. So look, it's going to be a, a, obviously difficult time in the next few years, but I feel like we'll get better. Definitely. And uh, like, you know, like before going to Belgium, you know, like you played in Australia with, and it was the NSL. And when you yeah. came back, it was the A-League. How big of a difference yeah. was it? Like? Was it just a rebranding or was it a whole different new animal? Uh, well, it was, yeah, it was definitely a different new animal. I mean, uh, we didn't have um, probably as many teams, which, which is hard because, again, you want to give everybody the opportunity, but because it was new and um, so they limited limited teams. They limited a, a number of players that were allowed to be in the team. So it was great, but it was also it was hard too because um, a lot of people and quality players would miss out. Um, but you know, it was just we we separated from NSL to A League. We also separated the um, ethnic cultural differences between certain clubs. There would always be um, you know fights or. Uh, disagreements or things like that where 
with the A-League, it was like, okay, we want to start and attract families to come watch. We want, want, we want them to feel safe. We, we still want them to, to have the atmosphere and excitement, but not have that cultural um, fight that had been part of our game here in Australia for a long time. But, uh, and and that's, that's kind of the difference. I mean, there was quality players. I still believe that the quality of players in the NSL were far better than what we have here in the A-League. Um, only because of, I feel we had so many teams, so there was more opportunity. But um, we're living, we're learning. Uh, I know that, the, especially with the Indian Football League, you, you would know too that um, with the IPL, uh, amazing crowds, awesome football, and that's the kind of thing we, we wanted to do. Obviously, it's kind of plateaued a little bit and gone, but hopefully we can build that excitement again. Definitely. And you know, like... Uh, uh, mm. uh, your career has spanned over three decades, you know, starting from 1995 to, uh, to 2015. Yeah. 15, uh, Good How has the game changed from the time you started, you know, like uh, till the last game you played? Um, well, the professionalism of it all too has changed. So I know that when I started, um, there were some great players, but we didn't have the like, you know, all the sports science, all the equipment, all the recovery. Um, that is at players' disposals now. So for me, as as anything as anything evolves, it it gets better and it gets quicker and it gets faster. Um, and that was um, what I seen with the with football, and especially here in Australia, is just the uh, the speed of the game, um, the, the like the professionalism of people coming through. Like you know, before you used to play, you'd go out and have a drink, have a laugh. And then you, you, you wouldn't, and it'd be okay. But nowadays, as soon as you finish football, you, you're thinking about the next game. How do I prepare? I need to eat this. I need to drink right. And and that helps obviously develop the game. And it, and it, and for me, it was the, the speed of the game uh, improved. And 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 it was um, not necessarily the quality, but just the speed. And uh, also, like you also had a spell at PSV. In, in how yeah. was it like you did of course it did not go according to how you would have hoped for because of course you would want to have caused a career in PSV do you look back yeah. maybe with a little uh, disappointment that it did not go out well um well look I mean I've, I've had I had a lot of setbacks and disappointments over my career and regret um I wouldn't say regret I maybe think if, if I could have done things a little bit differently but but I had the experience I was at PSV on loan for six, seven months. Uh, when I was there, we won the um, we won the championship. Um, I got to play with some of the play some players that I, I idolised and watched growing up. And not many people can say they've played at one of the biggest clubs in in, in uh, Netherlands and and in the in in Europe. So, I mean, for me, it was great to be there. I probably wish that I could have done things a little bit differently on the professional football side of things. Um, I mean, outside of the football side of things, but you know, that's that's my journey. Uh, uh, everyone has their journey. They live and they learn. I can probably now I'm in a position where if I see or if I know kids that are going in that environment, what they pro what they need to do, and and you know what sort of um, things they have to really focus on, and, and and that's what it is for me now. It's, it's, that journey has helped me to helpfully teach and and learn you know, for other people that are getting in that opportunity. So, you know, like, as a player, I, I, I'm always curious, you know, like, I wanted to ask you this, like, what is the biggest difference in playing in Australia, playing in Belgium and playing in PSV in terms of game and even opponents? Um, look, for, I, I feel when I was in Europe, emphasis wasn't too much on tactical stuff. Um, like, we, we had our setup uh, and and whatever qualities we had, we just go and play. Um, I feel like here in Australia, it's very, very, um, there's a lot of videos, there's a lot of tactics. And, 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 and for me, uh, it gets too much because, uh, I mean, that's why I left school so early because I, I, my attention was, was dif difficult and hard. And so I felt like in Europe, PSV, we knew what the team was going to be and we knew the qualities. And then it was just down to the manager to, get the best out of the players and I think that's the difference between um, being in Europe and, and, and being here. It obviously might have changed that 
because uh, you know it's been a long time since I was in Europe where it, it's probably going to be different tactically and and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I mean, my old ex teammate and coach Kevin Musket, um, I don't know if you've heard of, is in, is in uh, Belgium now. So he he he'll probably change the whole um, uh, dynamics of how he coaches and how Belgians have seen before because. I've seen firsthand what he does here. It's a lot of analysing. There's a lot of video, a lot of tactical stuff. So um, everyone needs to evolve and learn and, and learn off different things. So that's, I feel like, the way that um, football is happening. You know, like when I was preparing the questions for this interview, you know, I just found a very peculiar stuff. You have scored five goals in a game in A-League. You have even gone yeah. on to score 13 goals in a World Cup qualifier. Like, <laughs> how do you do it? Uh, look, that five goals um, in the A League final, that was that was a magic night. Like, and a lot of people remember that night. Um, that's that was sixty thousand people, um, and uh, against our biggest rivals at the time, and we win like that. And I had a feeling that I was going to score. I, I mean, I touched the ball six times, and I scored five, and my sixth touch was in the grandstand. But you know, that's the way football happens. Sometimes you can be in the right place at the right time. Not even played that well, and you score goals. I mean, with uh, my world record, um, I just only found out recently that American Samoa there was players missing or passport issues or visas, so the actual first team couldn't come. So they they played a lot of their uh, youth players, and um, and it was funny because my actual uh, striking partner he got nine goals too. So I mean, it could have been different, but. Um, I've got a world record. Not many people can say that, and it's uh, it's it's big. It's great. I mean, next year is actually going to be the 20 year anniversary of that match. So, uh, I'd love to be able to go there and talk to all the ex players and see what their thoughts are on it. So, at any point, did you not feel sad for the defenders that they? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? I, I reckon I've been asked that question 13 times. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, but. For me, it was I was breaking into the national team too, so and, and World Cup qualifiers were just around the corner. So I didn't care who the opposition was. I wanted to score goals and show my coach and manager at the time that I'm here. And so, I mean, it, it's hard because on the other hand, you do feel sorry for them, but you, you've got your own little ambitions that you want to live too. So you know, like uh, I'll put in a difficult spot here. If you had to choose out of between the two. The five goals or the thirteen, which one would you choose? Oh, bro, <laughs> it's funny. I've never been asked that question. Um, never really thought about it. I, I, I mean, on one hand, my thirteen goals is worldwide; everyone knows it. Um, on the other hand, I got to score five goals in front of a massive crowd of friends and family. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, oh look, I, I have to say, thirteen goals, man. Like it's 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 playing for your country. It's representing your country. Um, oh yeah. yeah, okay. I'll say thirteen goals, man. But that's a very good question. Very good question. <laughs> so you know, like again, one more difficult, and it'll be very difficult for you. Like ah. you scored lots of goals. If you had to choose one goal, you know, which you sometimes you go up and look up, maybe in, on YouTube. Okay, this is a good goal. You shouldn't let me. Um, yeah, I, I must admit I watch a lot of my own goals, trying to relive some of the past. But um, look, one goal in particular that stands out for me uh, was in a World Cup qualifier against Iraq in Doha. Um, it was only it wasn't anything spectacular. It was just a header. Uh, we but it was a goal that won us the game, and we weren't doing well in our qualification, so that helped us. Um, Get back on track, uh, and so for me that was probably the the most special goal for me that I've scored because um, it was for country, put us back on track with qualification, and uh, won us the game. So for me that was probably my favourite goal. So you know, like I wanted to ask you this, you know, like uh, you know, like when you are playing, you constantly have the attention of everyone, media attention, and also you have a set routine where you have like okay training, rest, once you retire or move down the level, how difficult is it for you even mentally? Oh, man, look, if you could see my stomach right now, I can tell you it's, 
<laughs> I mean, it's hard to kind of separate yourself from that athlete and, and not being an athlete because you still see yourself a certain way and, and, and you kind of put pressure on yourself and instead of really just enjoying life. I mean, you've still got to keep some or maintain some kind of healthy lifestyle, which I, which I do because I still like to train. I'm still playing now. I mean, obviously local. Um, but it's hard to keep that motivation because sometimes it's like you don't have to. I, I know when you're in that professional environment, you have to be focused. Like uh, as soon as you step out on that training pitch, it's just it's just constant. Um, when you turn when you go to local and it's just a kick around, sometimes you go, well, what am I doing here? I don't really need to be here. It's cold. Uh, I'm not feeling good. My body's sore. Uh, and, and you kind of think, well, yeah, there's much better places I can be right now. <laughs> so it's hard to kind of get motivated, but I still love being in that football environment that, that, that uh, you know, you may, you, you have a laugh, you talk about what's happened in your week or your day, and, and, you, and that that sort of, I don't know, that the excitement of winning or scoring, uh, seeing that, that still excites me and gives me a buzz. So, um, look, it's, it's, there's things that you, you find hard to separate, but um, the love of the game certainly doesn't fall away. So, you know, like uh, on a personal note, did you have, do you have plans to get into coaching? Um, look, I'm just going to finish my B license here in Australia um, and then I'll see what happens. But for me, it's I enjoy other things sometimes than football. Like, I mean, uh, I've just started my own academy here. I'll, well, I've, I've taken a franchise off uh, an academy um, company and to, to work in schools with kids, which I love. Um, so that's something that I, I want to do. But look, I love searching for talent, identifying talent, and um, and trying to nurture that. So for me, it's, it's, it's definitely want to coach in the youth area because uh, that's my passion. And, and obviously, I can um, give my experiences to some of the young ones coming through. So you know, like you, have, you have already mentioned that you work as a pundit slash analyst for for Fox Sports. And what is the best part about being a pundit or an analyst? Well, it's it, it, it's hard too because um, for me, it's, uh, it's you, you got to separate yourself from being a player. I mean, you know, being a having an opinion and and and, and trying not to upset the player. And um, because I have lots of friends that still play and. Um, but but it's it's hard to kind of because I know it, being in that position that they're in, it, it's difficult making decisions. Like it's easy to sit out and you can see everything um, and say, oh, he should have done this, he should have done that. But when you've only got two or three seconds to to um, obviously suss out the situation, what you need to do, it's difficult. So I understand that. For me, it's like the, just the simple things that I can actually comment on. But situations, uh, it's hard. So I mean. It's difficult because, and then you're not going to please everybody. Like, I mean, the way that I sometimes talk or I, I, I make mistakes and, you know, when I make mistakes, I make them big. So <laughs> even with, with words or players or, or tactics or, but, you know, that's me. Um, I've kind of just gotten used to, uh, because I thought once I finished football, the criticism and, and people um, having a go at you would stop. But it doesn't. Like it, it, it just keeps continuing, and uh, everyone's like, uh, you know, some comments I'll hear is like, oh, why is he even on TV talking? He can't speak English, you know, stuff like that. And it, it, it upsets you, but it's, um, part of life. You can't please everybody. I've just found that out. And but I enjoy it. I love still talking about football. I love being there. I still love um, interacting with the supporters and crowds. So uh, I'm very grateful and fortunate that I, I get to do that. Like, like you mentioned, I just wanted to touch that topic, you know, like you mentioned that uh, how people keep trolling you still now, even after you finish playing, but are those only yeah. internet trolls and maybe in real life they'll come and ask for a picture or something? Well, that's what it's like. It's, it's, it's funny. Um, sometimes when you, when you shout someone out or like, you know, um, immediately they're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, you know. And I understand it's like people get passionate about sport and um, that inner beast takes over and they sometimes forget what they say. And, and, and you know, I understand it. I've done it before. I, I still do it. But I, I feel like it's 
everyone's just trying to do the best that they can. You know, we're all doing the best that we can. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not being trained in media. It's not my forte. I'm learning as I go, but I enjoy it. So, I mean, like I said, you're never going to please everybody. But as long as you just be honest and, and show, like that's, that's, I feel like why I relate to so many people is that, you know, I might say dumb stuff, but they have a laugh or they relate and they know that it's just me. I'm, I'm not trying to be anyone else. So I think that's what, why uh, everyone kind of likes me and, and some don't like me. So you like, I'll move back to your footballing career. And if you had to choose one moment from your career, you know, which is a standout moment, which one would that be? Uh, World Cup qualifiers. Every time I played for Socceroos, um, probably one game that really kind of stands out when I think about it uh, is Uruguay, playing against Uruguay in 2005 World Cup qualifier. Um, we went on and, and won it in Australia. We went to the World Cup and that was 35 years since that happened. So being part of, I must admit, I've been very lucky because I've been part of big moments in Australian football um, in a landscape of things like World Cup, uh, World Cup qualifications, big matches, uh, A-League, um, grand finals. So I've been I've been pretty fortunate and lucky, and I've had heaps of moments. But that's that's a pretty special one. That 2005. So you know, like uh, you are quite experienced in terms of a player, and now you're doing a coaching license also. And if you had to give any piece of advice to a young player who's just starting out, what advice would you give him or her? Um, so pretty much just stay humble, um, work hard. Um, yeah. Don't don't get uh, don't let the ego um, take over and yeah just look and enjoy enjoy and, and work hard that's that's all that I can really say is the, the big thing for me is the ego you just uh, stay humble um, and and just work hard sometimes it happens for you sometimes it doesn't that's just life's journey I suppose so you know uh, uh, on that note Archie I'll ask you one final question okay and you have started yes. your academy. So, and if you had to unearth one of the two players from my academy, whom would you unearth? A Lionel Messi or a Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh, who I would have? Yeah. Um, well, I've played against Messi a couple of times and it's, he's amazing. Um, it's hard to kind of judge. I think that they're both incredible. I look at what Ronaldo's done. He's, he's played in the EPL. He's dominated that. He's gone to Spain, he's dominated that. He's gone to Italy and he's still dominating that. Um, and, you know, so he's had to adapt to different environments, different teams, but he always goes with and has success. Um, Messi has been part of this Barcelona team, which is incredible, um, but, like, hasn't really gone out and tried different things in different countries and, and uh, different football styles. But... Um, so in saying that, I, 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 man, you've done some good ones. Uh, I'd probably have to pick Ronaldo. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, he, because of what he's done over different countries and, and different leagues, and, and he just turns up every single time. So probably you'll be getting more trolls from now on. hundred percent, hundred percent. But then you know what? I love Messi too. So it's a tough one because I love them both. But if I had to choose, I'd probably choose Ronaldo. And too, because he's a good looking guy. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, Archie, thank you so much for talking to me. And I wish you all the best with your coaching license and also your academy. And hope you do not get yeah. injured by your trolls in the local uh, game. You know, they might take out all... The frustration is like, take yeah, care. Oh, I hope yeah. to talk to you soon again. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers, mm -hmm. mate.